Building core walls differ from interior partitions or exterior walls primarily because of their multi-story construction. When modeling core walls, you may at first want to model from the foundation all the way to the roof. This saves time because a single change can ripple through the building. But load-bearing, cast-in-place concrete walls are typically reduced in size as they extend up through a building to reduce weight. Walls higher up in the building don't need to carry as much load. So a single building core wall really can't extend the full height of the building. But there is an easy way to quickly create building core walls in Revit. In this project, I've begun a building model by creating a building shell with multi-story exterior walls. I've also already created a number of levels and placed grids to help define the location of the building core. On the architecture ribbon, if I expand the wall split button, I can see that there is a separate tool for creating a structural wall. In Revit, the only significant difference between a wall and a structural wall is the structural usage parameters. For example, I'll click the wall tool. Then, in the properties palette, if I scroll down to the structural area, notice that the checkbox for structural is turned off and the other settings in this area are grayed out, indicating that the value is read-only and therefore cannot be changed. I'll click Modify to end the command. Then, in the Architecture ribbon, I'll expand the Wall Split button and click the Structural Wall tool. Now, if I scroll down to the Structural area in the Properties palette, I can see that the Structural checkbox is selected. I can see that the structural usage is set to bearing and can also see that there are rebar cover properties as well. I'll click Modify to end the command. Notice that on the Architecture ribbon, the default wall tool creates architectural walls. But if I switch to the Structure ribbon, notice that in the Structure panel, there's a wall tool. But here, the default tool creates a structural wall. If I expand the Wall Split button, however, you can see that there is also the Architectural Wall tool that will create a non-structural wall. I'll start the Wall tool on the Structure ribbon. In the Properties palette, I'll expand the Type selector and choose a Core Shaft 18-inch Concrete Wall, or 450 mm in the metric file. I'll click the Edit Type button to open its Type Properties dialog. Notice that if I expand the Function parameter, you can see that there are a number of different functions available. These can be used for filtering, scheduling, and layer control when exporting to CAD. I'll click OK to close the Type Properties dialog. On the Options bar, I'll set the location line to Core Face Interior. On the Contextual ribbon, in the Draw panel, I'll select the Rectangle tool. Then, I'll move the cursor into the drawing area and place a rectangular wall outline from Grid Intersection 2B to 5D. I'll click Modify to end the command. Now that walls are in place, I want to create an opening. I'll zoom in to the lower right corner of the core walls. On the Architecture ribbon, in the Opening panel, I'll click the Wall Opening tool. Notice that Revit is prompting me to select the wall. I'll click to select the lower wall. As soon as I do, Revit prompts me to enter the starting point of the rectangular opening. I'll click to pick a starting point near Grid 5, then click to pick the end point of the opening near Grid 4. The actual width of the opening is not critical. Then I'll click Modify to end the command. Now you can see a gap in the wall. I can select it and then change its size and location using the temporary dimensions and the parameters in the Properties palette. Now that I've created the core walls on the basement level, I want to duplicate these walls at the other levels in the building. I'll zoom out so I can see all of the core walls. Then, hover the cursor over one wall 
and press the Tab key to highlight the entire chain of walls. Then, click to select them. Then, on the contextual ribbon, in the Clipboard panel, I'll click the Copy to Clipboard tool. Notice that as soon as I do that, the Paste tool becomes active. I'll expand the Paste Split button and click the Align to Selected Levels tool. Revit displays the Select Levels dialog. I'll select Level 1, then press the Shift key, and select Level 5 so that Levels 1 through 5 are selected. Then I'll click OK. I've just copied the core walls to those five levels. In the Project Browser, I'll double-click the Structural Core 3D view to open that view. Here, you can see that the core wall was indeed copied to the other floors, and the opening was copied as well, even though it was not selected. Remember that I had noted earlier that in an actual building, creating a single core wall that extends to the full height of the building was not the best way to model core walls, because in reality, walls at upper floors will likely not be as thick as those at lower levels. Notice that the four walls on level 5 are still selected. I'll move the cursor over a wall on level 4, press the Tab key to highlight the chain of core walls on that level, and then press the Control key, and then click to select those four walls as well. I'll repeat the same process to select the core walls on level 3. Now that the core walls on those three levels are all selected, I'll expand the Type Selector and change those walls to Exterior 10-inch Concrete or exterior 250 mm concrete in the metric file. The walls immediately change thickness to reflect that change, but since they still are positioned using the core face interior location line, the interior faces of the walls remain aligned vertically, with the thicker walls on the lower floors. If I had modeled the core walls as one continuous wall throughout the height of the building, I would not have been able to do this.